So today, on this Friday, today we got Jaron Small. Jaron, what's up? Thank you for joining us, man. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, of course, the pleasure is ours. So tell us about the work you've been doing with uh, Legends Do Live. Yeah, man. So Legends Do Live is a Houston-based nonprofit where our mission is to fund and equip disadvantaged youth and communities through workshop programs and events. Um, I started in 2013 with my, my co-founder, Douglas Johnson, and we pretty much bring in resources and funding back to schools that get taken away from yeah. the state level or the local level, or the case might be. Um, so we're doing it about, about 10 years. We're giving kids scholarships over a million dollars worth of scholarships. We've thrown like festivals in their high schools, just bringing um, a sense of fun back to, uh, to school and then also for the teachers as well. Um, so we, we uh, have a literacy program called Reading with a Rapper. So we teach kids how to read and write through rap lyrics, content and technology. So kids get to actually read the artist's lyrics and then actually have a, a legit sit down with that artist to learn about why they wrote that song, why supporting them, how to use the language in the song, X, Y, and Z. And then we have like our teachers appreciation weekend where we celebrate teachers, you know, okay. give them actual stipends and, and grants to use throughout the school year. Nice. Yeah, that's very important, man. Like, especially I wish I had a program like that when I was a kid, you know, being able to, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, read Jay-Z lyrics or Nas lyrics and then have one of the guys talk to us about, especially as a kid, like why they wrote this and that. But a question I have for you is, why do you think when it comes to funding for school, why do you think they always like cut back on like special programs and different extracurriculars? Man, honestly, I believe that they cut the funding from that because that's where the magic is, mm -hmm. right? And I think in a sense, they don't want that magic to fester everywhere because they need things to be in place for society within how everything works. But when you get a hold of magic, that's not a part of the normal day right. regimen society. So like art, that's like magic in itself. And mm -hmm. honestly, I, I say magic was really like pop culture. You know, it's like really like how that's our first introduction to a lot of things with, with it, maybe music, fashion, whatever in my case might be, is art. Yeah. You know, so for that to be cut, it's like crazy to me, but I think it's just, to be honest with you, I really don't know, man. Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know why would you cut something like that, which is so important. Right. And for me, especially, like an elementary school, I just remember doing like having the art classes and even like chorus and things like that. And always having to have like some type of fundraiser to get more instruments and clarinet mm -hmm. or in you know, the art class, using the crayon to like, you're down to the last like inch of it. Yeah. Know? And then I felt like those classes were the ones that really let you discover who you are, if you have talent here and there and things of that nature. So I always wonder why those were always the first programs to go. But when it comes to like, of course, you need your reading, of course, you need your math and social studies and things like that, but not even like cutting back from there. So everything could kind of be balanced, but instead of just like cutting whole programs, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So talk to us about the work you do with the teachers as well, because I feel like those are one of the, for me, there's like five jobs that are just like so crucial to society and teachers are one of those jobs and I feel like they don't get enough love. So talk to us about how that came to fruition as far as like getting stipends and teaching and grants to help them in the classroom. Yeah, I mean, I, I think me or you wouldn't be here without a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I, at some point, a teacher has impacted everyone on this planet in some mm -hmm. form or fashion, whether it's a traditional teacher or uh, untraditional, it might be your parent or a grandparent or somebody around you. If you're learning something from somebody, they're teaching you something. So the, right. the model of teaching is important because nothing would exist in this world if it wasn't for at some point as a teacher, yeah. impacting another student at some point. So for me, it was important to be able to not only impact students, but to impact the teachers because they're the gatekeepers that are around our kids majority of the day, majority of the year, Easier, giving them information. So I was like, why are we not giving them the right tools and resources to be creative, to be impactful? And if you go to school to be a teacher for four years, why would I stunt your creativity to teach when you dedicate your life to do this? I shouldn't give you a, I shouldn't like hire you then tell you, okay, this is what you need to teach now. It defeats the whole purpose of you getting a degree. Yeah. You know, so in my opinion, so for what we've done, I feel like it was important to not only like make sure the environment for teachers is, is dope, but also to support them financially because they don't get paid enough. A lot of teachers use their own funds 
when they get paid to buy supplies for their classroom, which I think is really Most backwards. Yeah, that's backwards. It's so backwards, bro. It's like they already yeah. don't get paid enough, then they still got to use their funds to get stuff in the class because they're cutting resources and other things away from the school. So we had to find a unique way to do it. And I think my way was working with corporations and different partnerships to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's where we are, why we're here today, you know, us being able to impact teachers, especially during Teachers Appreciation Weekend, um, giving them grants, scholarships to be successful next year. But also now we want to take it a step further to create our own teacher fund, mm -hmm. right? So we now with the teacher funds, teachers will be able to apply for this a specific fund throughout the year based on the criteria throughout the whole year now. So they need support. It won't just be a designated week where they just get highlighted for seven days, but now they have 365 where they can feel like they can be really supported and being taken care of the right way. Yeah. So that'll be like a pool of money for the year. And then which mm -hmm. so yep. access to those resources and funds to and then get more pencils and crayons and like, you know, regular things that any kids should have in the classroom, but you know. Yeah, man. And it, what's crazy, Omar, like when we do our program for reading a rapper, we come in and train the teachers, but we pay the teachers extra. Yeah. You know, so we really support teachers all around because the curriculum that is being provided was actually written by actual real ELA teachers. So yeah. I have actual teachers on my staff that still teach in school today that's on the same side. When they get done with that, they come over here and create something super marvelous like Reader and a Rapper. And now it's being able to put out in, into the world for everybody to really like embrace. Yeah. And that's a good segue into the next question because how did like Reading with a Rapper come, you know, into place and who was the first rapper you had on to participate in that? So, Reader and Rapper was started in 2018, mm -hmm. right? So it's still new, summer 2018. Our first event we did was in Houston with Microsoft. And I was on my college campus at Prairie Union University, just up there in the summer, I just like being up there around younger kids and I get a lot more fresh ideas. Yeah. And I saw an interview of the Migos. They made them read a Dr. Seuss book. It was Llamas in Pajamas, but they had to, read it like as they were rapping in their Migos yeah. voice. And it just clicked. Yeah. I was like, yo, this yeah. is a thing. Yeah. We'd be around this all day and we really don't even really be knowing like really what it is. So I called a teacher. I was like, yo, I need you to make this scholastically fit into a school. I have an idea of making it cool, but if it doesn't meet the sites, the standards of scholastic standards, then it's not, they're not gonna let it in. Right. Um, and I think our first artist, our first real big artist that we did was Meek Mill. Right. Right, so we had got him soon as he had got out of prison. I approached him, I was like, yo, what if I told you that you can teach kids how to read and write instead of prison through your music? Yeah. Because we saw in our research that 85% of the kids that's in the, the juvenile system or interface with, they're functioning illiterate. Mm -hmm. 85%, bro. So I was like, oh, you're, comp you're making bad decisions because your comprehension level is low. Right. Your comprehension level is low because you don't know how to read at a certain level to mm -hmm. comprehend and make decisions. So like, if I get you to learn how to read and write at a quicker pace, you'll make better decisions. That means you won't go to juvenile. That means you won't go to jail. That means you won't, won't go to prison. So, right? So the school to prison pipeline is now getting cut in half with something they said, which was putting them in there. Now it's taking them out because it's giving them the right way to be balanced. Yeah. And so we did one with him where he came to Houston on his tour. He said an extra day, he didn't charge us anything. Hey, all the kids, Puma Reform Shoes, Microsoft Gator Kids Computer, but all the, the boys that were in that particular pop-up were all on probation. Mm. You know, we saw that and the, the, the DA came, the mayor came, and it was just a really great time for people to be like, okay, this is how we should really be impacting our youth to make a really pivot change in what we're trying to do instead of just using it as a good talking point. Right. Especially when the kids see, like, you know, their favorite artists come in and talk to them and, like, you know, read their lyrics with them and break down how you did this simile or metaphor and things like that. So yeah, I can see how impactful that could yeah, be. Yeah, he, he was in there, he was in there uh, breaking down champions, the yeah. album, you know, we playing it out loud. The kids is like, yo, this is really wild. And he walks in. <laughs> like, the kids were just so like, whoa, wait, you're in front of me now? Like, and it's a full blown discussion. Yeah, definitely. I can only imagine as a kid. And yep. stuff, so yeah, so lastly, like what's next? Like what's the next step for the program to become even bigger and better and really like try to get this into like all the schools nationwide. Yeah, so actually in the fall, we're coming out with our own app um, that will allow us to be in several places at one time, but we're looking at doing a beta phase of that app in New York, LA, Chicago, Houston, and Atlanta. 
So, uh, so that is getting ready to implement into the next fall. Like it's it's coming because we feel like COVID kind of gave us a great opportunity to, to convert over to Read and Rapper virtually. So right. now we have a digital virtual program, mm -hmm. which I'm really excited for because now we're we're engaging in the conversation of like what does streaming look like in school now. Especially with like the access and it being digital. So the artists, especially locally, it's nothing for them to hop onto the app real quick and talk to the mm -hmm. kind of schedule a whole like situation with the artists coming to a school, being there physically and things like that. So yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to that app. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like that's about all I got for you. Uh, I'll let you have like the closing words. Yeah, so um, I'm really thankful for this opportunity to be on this platform and talk about what we're doing, um, especially during Teachers Appreciation Week. Yep. Um, uh, with us launching Tall here in Houston, Teachers Appreciation Weekend, you know, we have our event Saturday from this interview where we're highlighting about 20 teachers and impacting them with scholarships and grants um, that Finish Line and JD is a part of. So I'm really right. super, super excited about that and you guys really being a part of what we're doing here and even allowing us the space to come in and to shoot those interviews of those teachers that we did over that's right. going to be highlighted, you know. So I think it's important specifically them being from HBCUs because they don't get enough attention and enough um, just do for what they do in their institutions. So uh, I would say at the end of the day, us moving forward and anything we do or anything that we do as a as a people or human race, mm -hmm. have culture involved and have involved because it's, yeah. it's the most powerful tool that can be used if it's used the right way. Definitely, absolutely. And lastly, like where can people go to figure out, you know, find out more information about what you do, you know, if they want to donate, things of that nature. Yep, so they can go to Legends Do Live dot com yep. to go to everything so you'll find the literacy program from there all of our initiatives what we do including if you want to donate as well that'd be on our site and then it's legends you live on all social media platforms and reading with a rapper so if you do reading with a rapper it's going to be reading w a rapper mm -hmm. cool so you heard that from the man himself legends do live dot com we know a rapper john small you're doing god's work man super proud of you and the work you've been doing in the community and yeah that's a wrap man all right, man. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, man. For sure, for sure.